picked up another couple of females. We're about to embark on an adventure. We became friends way back in eighth grade. We've seen each other's highs and lows. We've seen each other's dates. So that's why it works. That's why we're so close. We got no chemistry. We're straight chilling now. And so we hang out just to waste some time. I have no doubts we'll stay inside the lines. We're friends after all, and friends have fun. No need to change what works until it don't. Uh oh. All right, welcome back to the second episode of Boy with a Heart. Today brings us to high school freshman year there was this girl surprise now she was friends with some of my friends and that's how we got introduced to each other hanging out in a friend group and then we just kind of hit it off we started snapping you know snapchat was big back in the day so it's gonna make a theme in a lot of my episodes started snapping Occasionally, we would visit scooters or family fair after school just to grab a bite. Usually, in fact, every time she brought her friend with her, so we were never alone. I mean, the first time that we were alone, it was it was at a football game. And we were cold, so we were cuddling, eating Skittles together. I remember that. She was black hair, pale, so... Skin color was like mine. Kind of like an easygoing, just low-key type of girl. Like, she didn't really think too much about things. But she also was very just go with the flow. Those are kind of the same thing, you know? So I I liked her, but she was atheist. And I come from a very Christian background. And I, I knew that if I was going to continue this relationship with her, or at least continue this liking phase and to pursue into a relationship that I was going to probably break my morals. This is one of the only times that I can remember where I actually was the person to say, you know, or just like kind of stopped talking to her and distanced myself. Most often when it comes to girls, I just don't have that willpower. But this was a time in my life where I was making a stand for myself and I was saying, I'm going to say no to this so that in the future I'm going to be happier. <laughs> This might not make sense to some of my listeners. Like, why would you give up something that was good? But it's not that I was going to shoot myself in the foot. I was I was looking for something better, you know. I knew that this was, it was good, but there was something better in the future for me. And so we ran into each other in the hallway occasionally after we stopped talking much. And it was a little awkward, you know. Not too awkward, because I had diffuse situations. So I just was like, hey, hey, bye. <laughs> I wish you guys could see my brain right now for the confrontations because they were rather hysterical because it was just nothing, you know? And, you know, the years down the road, I actually reached out to her again to just talk to her about it and apologize. And she just said that, you know, we just fizzled out. It wasn't anyone's fault. We just fizzled out. And, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I'm going to combine this with another girl because it was also the same time frame. It was the next semester. So all the football games are done. And I go to a dance, a church dance, and I meet this girl. I guess I haven't even given these girls names, so you guys kind of want to place them in your brain, so when you refer back to them, you can talk about someone. We'll call the first girl Karen. She wasn't Karen. I don't know why I chose that name. <laughs> that just makes me sound like who's into a bomb. Okay, sure, Karen. And the second girl is going to be called Leslie. That sounds like a guy name, too. So I don't know what it is with my ability to choose fake names for people. So Leslie, I met <laughs> a dance from my church. And we we kind of hit it off. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm lying in bed right now while I record these. In fact, every single episode is probably going to be recorded lying in my bed. We hit it off, you know, ask the questions while we dance together. You know, where you go to school, do any sports, yada, yada, yada. Get her Instagram, because I'm a spit game like that. You know it. And then we are texting for the next couple weeks. This makes me look bad. I didn't want a relationship. I'd said no to the previous relationship. And this one, I also felt like we were progressing, and it was going to lead somewhere. And I was just like, oh, man, I don't know how to let her down, because 
I'm acting like I'm into her. I am. I like her, but I don't want a relationship. So I thought the easiest way would just be to ghost her. Again, I am not usually the person that ends things. But for whatever reason, as a freshman, I just had this weird thing going on where I could just say no. So I ghost her after a couple weeks of texting. And, you know, within the half of a day to a day, it was probably the next day, her friend had already reached out to me and been like, yeah, Leslie's super worried. Like, what's going on? Are you okay? And I was didn't want a relationship and yada yada and the friend's always like well bro you literally like wrecking this girl's heart and i was like i know so bad but like i had to do what i had to do the best part of this whole story is that about four years down the line i'm in the car with one of my buddies and i ask him if he has like a girl right now and he's like yeah and then he shows me a picture of her and it's the same girl and i was like Oh my goodness. I didn't even know what to tell him. So I just like gave him like a short story version of what happened. He's like, bro, you totally fumbled the bag. I was like, I'm I'm good. I mean, like, I'm happy for you guys, but I just I'm glad I didn't have a relationship at that age. But you guys have fun together. So I just thought I'd add that in there. <sighs> That's the only time that I can I remember ghosting a girl ever. So I've never done it since because I feel like it's it's really just, it's shallow and you should be able to confront and talk about things as a mature man, you know, confess your feelings or tell her how it is, be honest. So I've never done that since. I was a freshman. I can't be judged by my past choices. I guess I've been ghosted by girls, so it came back to me. My takeaway from this lesson, from this episode is just that, be honest, communicate, And when things are going poorly or when things need to change, don't be afraid to tell them. You know, I feel like most people would rather you tell them than have no communication with you. Think about that. Especially if someone you've been talking to or crushing on or even dating, like they give you part of their time, part of their life. They deserve to have closure. They deserve to be able to hear your honest words and thoughts if things change. You never know if they'll come back into your life, how it will come back to bite you, if they'll know one of your friends, your future employer. You just want to end relationships in a good note. Communicate in general. And it's not as easy as being like, okay, so just tell me how you feel, yada, yada. Because some people don't respond as well to honesty. And you might have to put it delicately. But if you want to be able to really feel and understand your partner, you've got to communicate. And they've got to learn to communicate to you. Otherwise, you're going to be living this half-life, just waiting for something to happen. Whether it needs to end because things come or whether you have learned how to communicate so you can get through it when things come, you're better off because no one will ghost each other. Set your limits, learn how to say no, and learn how to communicate and be honest. That's the lesson takeaway. When one door closes, another opens. We often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one which has opened for us. Alexander Graham Bell. YOLO. Peace.